Hello, in this video we're going to look at comparing numbers in JavaScript. If you've done programming before in some other language, you can skip this video because there are no surprises in this particular one. This is stuff that is the same in many different programming languages. Uh, so let's start off with use strict here because I want to force myself to declare variables. Now we can write console.log and we could compare, for example, 7 with 7. Supposing we want to know if 7 is equal to 7, which it clearly is, we can write 7 equals equals 7. Now uh, this equals equals here is the equality test operator. It t it's un unlike the single equals sign, which is used to assign values to variables, the double equals sign is the equality test operator it's used to check if two values are equal or not, and it returns either true or false. I say returns, meaning um, this whole expression here will evaluate as a whole to either true or false. Let's run this. So um, what did I call that? I called it comparing numbers. So if I run uh, node comparing numbers.js, it says true. Now this is a bit useless because we know that 7 is equal to 7, but I could have one of these values stored in a variable. Like, let's write let um, value, or let's write, let's call it days in week equals 7. And notice um, the way I write this variable here is called camel casing. So I've written the first letter lowercase and then each subsequent word that it's made up of, I write with an uppercase first letter for readability. This is called camel casing, and it's a very common convention in JavaScript, so it's what I'm going to be using here. It's important to stick to consistent coding conventions. Now, so I can compare days in week here with 7. Is it equal to 7? That, and that's going to be, of course, true. True. Whereas if I asked, is it equal to 6 or something, then it's going to be false. And this might not seem like much, but uh, this is sort of a key part of programming, really, comparing values like this. This might be something you've got from user input, or it's something you calculated at enormous length, and then you want to check, is it equal to something else? In JavaScript, there's also a symbol with three equal signs like this, uh, which at first glance seems to do the same sort of thing. And we're going to be looking at that um, a, video to, a video to, video or two down the line. Uh, for the moment, we'll just look at equals equals. Now let's just copy this and um, I'll, cr I'll add like a sort of um, a bit of text here so that we can, because I'm going to have lots of these, and uh, I want to keep track of which one's which. Okay, so there's um, equals equals. There's also less than or greater than. So we could write days and week less than eight, for example. That will be true. Let's try this. True. And there's also greater than, so days in week greater than 8. So, of course, this, this is the bit that's being actually evaluated uh, and turned into either true or false. This is just some text that I've just put there as a description. So is days in week greater than 8? No, it's not, because days in week is 7. So if we run this now, we should get false, and we do false. Uh, there's... You can use less than and greater than with floating point numbers like 8.3, for example. If you want, you know, you want to compare two numbers with decimal points in them, you can compare them with greater than or uh, less than. You can't do it so successfully with equals equals. It should be avoided. Don't try to compare floating point numbers or decimals or fractions, whatever you want to call them, with equals equals because um, they can't be stored in a precise way in a computer's memory. So um, two floating point numbers that seem to be equal, you know, they could differ by some tiny, tiny amount. 
and they won't be equal at all. Or, you know, something weird could happen, basically. Just avoid comparing floating point numbers with equality test operators in most programming languages in general. It's, it's not a good thing to do. Um, but all of these work fine with integers, and it's common to use these two with floating point integers. Notice with the less than and greater than operators, they return true if the thing at the smaller end of them, if you think of them as having a small end and a large end, these actual operators, uh, it's when the thing at the smaller end is smaller than the thing at the larger end that they return true. So days and week, is that smaller than eight, which is at the larger end? Yes, so that's true. Here we've got another operator, it's greater than. Days and week is at the bigger end of the operator, so to speak. Is that bigger, therefore, than 8, which is at the smaller end? No, it's not. So this is going to evaluate to false. After a while, it, it sort of becomes second nature um, to, to recognize uh, these less than and greater than. So we've also got um, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Let's copy these and change them to less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Uh, so these, this will, this taking this one for a start, less than or equal to, this is going to return true if, um, if days in week is either less than or equal to eight. Let's maybe put seven here. So if we ask firstly, is it is it is days in week less than seven? That's false. It's not it's not less than seven because it, it's equal to seven. But if I write is days in week less than or equal to seven, less than or equal to seven, that's now true. Days in week is less than or equal to seven because it happens to be equal to seven. So if I run this now, I should change the text as well here. This is now true. And uh, greater than or equal to, of course, works in the same sort of way. I'll just leave this as it is. Uh, is days in week greater than or equal to eight? False. It's not greater than eight and also it's not equal to eight. And that's why that gives me false. There we go, false. Okay, um, so that those are all the most important uh, comparison operators for numbers. We've also got this one, the identity test operator, which we're gonna talk about later. But, you know, in general, you can basically use that instead of equals equals, um, wherever you feel like it. With numbers here, it's just gonna do the same thing. Oh yeah, there's also not equal, which I should mention. So if I copy these, we've got not equal, looks like this, and we've also got a version of it with just another equals sign in which for our purposes here does the exact same thing. So um, is days in week not equal to six? That's true, it's, it, it's not equal to six. So if we run this, we find yes, it's true that it's not equal to six. And this longer version does the same thing here. We'll talk about that later. So um, if you're a beginner, and you probably are if you actually watch this video, um, then you want to just practice these. Uh, try them all out for yourself. Just try them all out. Don't worry about making notes, but try them uh, for yourself. And you probably want to make sure that you can remember what they're called, I suppose. So this is equality test. This is actually identity test, which we'll look at later. Um, this is the not equal operator. This is uh, not identical. And we've got less than, what's this one? Greater than, 
less than or equal to uh, greater than or equal to. Okay, um, try them all out and uh, we'll move on to look at comparing strings. When we finish going through these comparison operators, which won't take us much longer, then we will go on to actually practically using them and looking at some more of the building blocks of programming. So until next time, happy coding. Hello, in this video we're going to talk about basic string comparison in JavaScript. So um, let's write use strict here and I'll have a string. Let's write text equals cat. So we can check if um, two strings are equal with equals equals. So let's write console.log and um, text equals equals cat. So these, these two strings are equal. So this equality test operator here should return true. Let's maybe put this in a, um, a kind of a comment. We'll just output this text so that we know what we've done here. Then if I run this, so node and comparing strings.js, we see that this uh, indicates that the two strings are the same by returning true or by evaluating to true. We can also use the slightly longer version of this operator. Uh, so this that's the equality test operator. This is the identity test operator. What's the difference? Well, we'll look at that in the next video. But um, in a nutshell, basically, you probably, some people think that you shouldn't use this uh, short version. Um, it's kind of a, an older um, feature of JavaScript here, this equals equals. And some people call it the evil twin of the identity test operator. So if in doubt, use the longer versions. So if you run this now, um, again, that says they're, they're the same. It returns true. We've got not equals as well. So we've got, that also works with strings, just as you'd expect. So is it true that this text, which contains the word cat, is not equal to cat? That's uh, that's going to be false in in all of these cases. Not equal, and it, um, it's false that it's not equal. It's false that it's not identical. It is identical. It is equal. Now, surprisingly, we can also use um, less than or equal to with str with strings. So uh, we can write text, for example, this variable text, uh, less than dog. Is that true or is it false? Let's maybe just put this in a comment as well. Not exactly a comment, but just some text to remind us of what we're doing here. Well, um, this is actually going to uh, evaluate to true because um, it just checks the alphabetical ordering of, of the strings involved. So cat sorts earlier in the alphabet in the alphabet than dog because it begins with a C. So um, if you think about the ordering of it, it's true that cat is less than dog. So if I run this now, it's not a comment on cats or dogs, but it says true. Cat is, uh, is less than dog in the alphabetical sense. So, of course, you can use greater than, you can use greater than or equal to with strings as well. Let's just check that. So I could write um, text greater than or equal to dog. Is it true or is it false? Well, cat is, it sorts earlier in the alphabet than dog. So that's going to be false. What else? I think I think that's probably it. Less than, greater than. Notice that the um, less than or greater than are are sort of case sensitive. So um, here we've got yeah. Let's let's try comparing uh, cat with cat with a capital C or dog maybe. Let's write dog with a capital D. And I'll just replace the text in this string here as well. 
Uh, so is, is this true or false that dog is greater than or equal to dog? It's false, I think, because um, uh, in the character set that we're using here, Unicode character set, capital letters are actually ordered earlier than lowercase letters. So I think this is false. Let's just try it. Yeah, false. Um, so dog is not greater than or equal to dog with a lowercase d. All right, um, that's it for this video. Um, th there are other ways to compare strings as well, but uh, most of the time these operators will, will do the trick for you. So until next time, oh yeah, if you're a beginner, the important thing is, uh, I'll just say it again, you've got to just try this out for yourself. Try them all out and make sure you understand them. And uh, pretty soon we're going to get on to practically using them with loops and conditionals. These are, we're still working at the moment with the absolute nuts and bolts, the real building blocks of programming languages. So until next time, happy coding.